All right, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you are here this morning. And everybody who haven't been here for a while, well, we have, all haven't been here for a while. It's been a month, I think, since our, our last meeting. So it's so great to, to see you all here. Now, I hope it's a really wonderful year for all of you. And it's my prayer and it's my hope that, this, that 2022 will be a very special year for each one of you. No matter where you are, no matter what your circumstances are, that you will just experience that God is with you and that he will carry you through this year. Now, friends, what I find absolutely fascinating is the, um, how one digit can just change, in a date, can just change people's emotional state like that. I just find it absolutely amazing. The emotional effect one change in the digit can have on, on, in the date can have on people. In general, people just seem much more optimistic. They just seem so much more positive at the start of a new year than at the end of an old one. People who may have felt, you know, who felt their situation was hopeless a week before go into a new year and suddenly they are hopeful. You know, not because their situation has changed, but because their perspective has changed. You know, it's like they go into this new year and they say, well, who knows? Maybe 2022 will be better than 2021. We're hoping it will be better. And suddenly they're a lot more optimistic. You know, I went walking on New Year's morning. So quite early in the morning, I, I went for a walk and everything was still closed. And Cambridge was like a ghost town, except for a few people who went, also went walking or, or running. Maybe it was their New Year's resolutions, you know, and they walked a little bit more, ran a little bit more. And everywhere I went, People greeted me with enthusiastic, happy new years. You know, everybody was just so happy and smiley and so optimistic. The, the atmosphere was just optimistic and a positive all around me. And it just seemed as though people were more hopeful that morning than they were the previous day or the week before. Despite the fact that the COVID numbers were still rising, the economy was still not great, and the problems people had before they probably still had on that day. On New Year's Day. Yet they seem to muster strength from somewhere to face the new year. And that made me wonder. As I was walking, I started wondering about this. In the first place, where did they get the strength from? And then, secondly, wherever that was, was that a reliable and a sustainable source for the strength? Overall, people are just immensely stressed. And I think the last year, or actually the last two years, have been stressful for all of us. You know, it's, it's definitely taken its toll. And I, I'm beginning to see that in a lot of people, you know, how it's taking its toll. Now, we all know that life can be stressful in itself. I mean, there are always inevitable crises and issues that people face from time to time. Many people struggle with financial issues. Other people struggle with work issues. Some people struggle with relational issues. And that is just life in general. However, at the moment, and that is just when life is normal, but at the moment, the way we can describe life is anything but normal. I mean, just look around you. We, you are all, and I have a little bit earlier as well, we were all wearing masks, and we're sitting in church. Now, just by the by, do you know what it feels like to speak to a lot of people where you get very little facial sort of expression back? It's terrible. It's terrible. Because usually, you know, I would say something that I think is quite humorous or, or you know, I, I think it's joking. And, and yeah, it does bypass a lot of you. But some of you will inevitably get my little jokes, you know, and then you will give me a smile. Some of you will give me a smile back. Now I've got nothing. You know, so just spare a thought for me as, as I go through this, please. Anyway, the point I want to make, friends, is that even though people are immensely stressed, as the, as the new year rolled around, it was as though everyone decided to just dig a little deeper, try a little harder, do a little more, and just be stronger. My question, though, is where do they get that strength from? Now, I can tell you where conventional wisdom and self-help books and pop psychology will tell you they get it from, and that is by using more willpower, by literally digging deeper within themselves. In fact, willpower is also known as drive, determination, self-discipline, self-control, or self-regulation. Yeah, there, there it is. There, there's actually the definition. That's a simple definition of willpower. It's the ability to resist short-term temptations and desires in order to achieve long-term goals. So to display willpower means that you choose long-term satisfaction over instant gratification. That's what willpower is. 
the great Indian leader Mahatma Gandhi said, strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. Now, according to the American Psychological Association, the APA, most psychology researchers will actually define um, willpower as what I just said. It's delayed gratification. It's the ability to delay gratification and resist short-term temptations to meet long-term goals. But I also say it's the capacity to override an unwanted thought, feeling, or impulse, the conscious effortful regulation of the self by the self, and then the thing that's most interesting to me in their definition is, they say this, it's a limited resource capable of being depleted. In other words, willpower is a great tool to have in your arsenal. However, you've got to realize that it's not really a sustainable source of strength. Overall, though, the benefits of it's great. You know, if you look at all the research, and I've been reading a bit on this, they say that um, they've actually proven this, that, that willpower, if you have greater amounts of willpower, it will help you to be healthier, happier, uh, do better in your career, have better relationships. It's, it's got a whole host of benefits to it. And if we focus just on improving our willpower, we will get better at attaining our goals. So the next logical question in this train of thought would be, but okay, so how do we strengthen our willpower? if that is such a great resource to have. Let me just quickly give you five things that research tells us, latest research on this tells us. The first thing is that you've got to improve, if you improve your self-awareness, you will improve your willpower. Most of our choices are actually made on autopilot. You know, we, we don't really think of what we are doing. It's, it's without an aware, any awareness of what's really driving us or the effects that it will have on the rest of our lives. So the first step to change any behavior is self-awareness. To be aware of what you are actually feeling and thinking. And just focusing on your thought processes, just focusing on your emotions will help you to make better choices as you go through this year. In fact, um, when people are easily distracted, they often fall for temptation. I mean, we've, we've all done this. You know what it's like if you're distracted by your hunger? Don't go and do shopping. You know this, because then you buy a lot of stuff that you don't really need, and you don't really want, and you, it doesn't fit with your New Year's resolutions. You know? So you don't go shopping when you're distracted by your hunger. All right, so, so increase your self-awareness, and you will increase your willpower. Very simple thing to do, in theory. Okay, the second way is to increase our willpower is through meditation. Now, this isn't something only practiced by the enlightened. Um, if you know how to worry, you will know how to meditate. Okay, you're practicing this, this all the time. Um, it's a way of focusing your thinking, like you focus on your breathing, or like you're observing how you're feeling or what you're thinking. In fact, you know what? Praying is a form of meditation, because then you choose to focus on God, and you put all your focus on, on Him, and you ask Him for His help in your life, and what He can do instead of just focusing on your worries. Third way to improve your willpower is through exercise. Um, now, many people think, well, if I just had more willpower, then I would exercise more. But it's interesting that actually, if you exercise more, you will have more willpower. It's fascinating. Um, and one study I came across where they actually you know, told people to do a lot more physical exercise, the, how it enhanced their self-control was incredible. And they found, after they've done this study, was people were eating less junk food, they were eating more healthy foods, they were watching less television, they were studying more, they were saving more money, they were procrastinating less, and in fact, they were actually arriving at appointments more on time. That's just because of the physical exercise that they did. So when it comes to exercise, consistency is more important than intensity. And some of you are here just to hear that message this morning, for this new year. Okay, consistency is more important than intensity when it comes to exercise. And they say, if you exercise outside, if you do anything outside in nature, what I call green exercise, that's actually very good and much better. The benefits are much greater for your willpower as well. So just something to go and take away. Right, the fourth thing they say here is, um, is to eat well. You know, as I said earlier, willpower is a limited resource and it can get depleted over time. Now, what research has found is that there's a link between the level of willpower you have and the level of glucose in your body. So glucose is basically the, the fuel for your, for your body, and um, your brain needs it. Okay, so for normal functions like thinking and learning and memory, your 
brain is dependent on glucose. It, it needs it. So in other words, exerting willpower uses a considerable amount of fuel, which means that you will need to get your blood sugar levels up again after you've used your willpower, or a lot of willpower. However, feeding the wrong types of foods, like certain types of refined sugar, and it can actually increase your levels of stress hormones in your brain, and so which can lead to higher levels of anxiety. So the bottom line is, eating whole foods regularly and avoiding refined sugars will keep your glucose levels stable and therefore better equipped when it comes to willpower. Now, as I read this research, I thought, well, that's actually fascinating because what it struck me is that many people rely on willpower when they want to resist that extra piece of chocolate cake or that donut, you know, when they feel they crave it and they, it's like, but now I've got to dig deep to resist it. But in that moment, their willpower is probably at its lowest point. And so it's the last thing they can actually rely on, which, which I just found fascinating when I read it. It's much better, better to make sure that you actually have healthy alternatives available to get your blood sugar levels up in that moment. Anyway, here's the last one, just a bit of research that I've, I've been reading. And that is that you've got to relax. Okay? Apparently, when you are in a relaxed state, you are more likely to manage your stress much better, to resist impulsive behavior, to exert self-control, and experience a sense of focus and calm. Now again, what is fascinating is that when somebody is in a stressed state of mind, they will often reach for what I think will bring them immediate relief. Things like smoking, drinking, gambling, surfing the internet, watching TV. That's what I will reach for. And when I want to overcome those things, they think, oh, this, these are bad things, so I've got to try and overcome this. They often think that willpower will help them to achieve it. However, the stress they are under is actively resisting their willpower. So it's much better to first just get your body to relax by starting with your breathing, slowing down your breathing, and then finding other coping strategies for the stress, like exercising or reading, praying, going for a walk, listening to music, spending um, time with some loved ones. Now, friends, as I read this, I thought, this is some great advice, hence I'm sharing it with you, because I'm, I'm thinking this, this would be great for the new year, to take some of this advice with us. However, as I read it, two things became abundantly clear to me. The first one is that willpower is a limited resource, and it gets depleted over time. And the second thing that stood out to me is that stress is one of the biggest obstacles to willpower. And therefore, telling people to just dig deeper, to just look within themselves, to overcome all the stress and all the turmoil they're experiencing, is not only not sustainable, it's not the best strategy. It's not a wise thing to do. It feels almost akin to saying to someone who's struggling with alcohol addiction that the only way to overcome the addiction is to be exposed to more alcohol. Okay, that's a counterproductive strategy. It's not wise. It's not a very clever thing to do. And although you can increase your levels of willpower through all the stuff we just said, healthier eating habits, exercising regularly, going out in nature, relaxing more, doing meditation, all, all of those things, it's clear that we need something more than just willpower. Because as one researcher put it, they said to rely on willpower alone is almost like only relying on your emergency brake when you're driving your car. Friends, the reason so few people's New Year's resolutions last beyond the end of January is because willpower alone is not enough. It's not enough. It fades over time, especially if people are under lots of stress. It will fade. And make no mistake, friends, we are living in extremely stressful times. So willpower is great. I think it's an amazing resource. But if we want a sustainable source of strength for us here, we need something else. We need something more. Fortunately, there is something more. Something that is extremely reliable, sustainable, and more trustworthy than anything else you will ever find. We find it in, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Here it is, Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Friends, this is actually the first verse in a, in a well-known passage that speaks about putting on the armor of God. Many of you probably know it, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20. 
And over the next few weeks, we are going to explore this passage in much more detail. And in our series, what we call, I've named it simply, Stronger. Stronger. That's the series of the, well, the title of the series. And it's, it's so titled because I honestly believe that it's time for us to get stronger. It's time for us to become stronger in our faith, stronger in our prayer, stronger in using God's word in our lives, stronger in supporting one another. And we are going to discover together how God wants us to become stronger. That's what we're doing this year. Anyway, Paul tells people what tools are, um, before he tells people what the tools are that God has already given us and how we should use them, he reminds us that our strength doesn't lie in ourselves. He's not offering us a battle cry along the lines of, come on church, you can do this, you know, dig it a little deeper, just do a little more, you, you know what you want and just go for it, it's, it's yours, it's within your cross. That's not what Paul's doing, not at all, not at all. Now Paul didn't have all the research on world power that we have. And he may not have understood the neuroscience behind it. He may not have understood the psychology behind it. But he did know this one thing about willpower. And that is that willpower is not sustainable. But God's power is. He knew that our strength doesn't lie in ourselves, but in the God we serve. And so, if you were to ask Paul, the Apostle Paul, where would we get our strength from for this year ahead? Where do we get it from, Paul? He would immediately answer you, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. So often we come to people and we say, we hear about their problems and we say, just be strong, you know, just be, be strong. Paul didn't stop at that. He didn't stop at that exhortation. He told people what the source of that strength is, where to get it. In fact, just a few pages before that, you know, this is the last letter of his page, written to the Ephesians. And a few pages before that in his letter, he wrote this, Ephesians 3 verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He knew the source of strength, and he prayed that they and us may experience this for ourselves. This is something Paul experienced for himself. If there was ever a Jesus follower, friends, who made a massive difference, yet was painfully aware of his own failings and his need for someone bigger than and something bigger than and more than his own willpower, it was this guy, the Apostle Paul. Just listen to what he said in another letter to, his, to the Romans. He, he wrote this, I have discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Can anybody identify with that? No, I can. No matter how much he wanted to do the right thing, he just couldn't always do it. And he realized that willpower was just not enough. And then he goes on, he says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. He knew he didn't have the strength in himself to overcome what he faced. But he knew where he could get his strength. In fact, in another letter, he wrote to yet another church he planted, um, this time in Corinth. He spoke candidly about a challenge that he was facing in his own life. And, and then he told them what God's answer was to him. And he wrote it down. He said, this is what God answered me. And he basically said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And then Paul goes on, and he came to this conclusion. He said, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses, and in the insults, hardship, per hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He knew that living with strength, facing challenges with power, does not reside in oneself. It is not dependent on your willpower. It's not dependent on digging a little bit deeper in yourself. The source of sustainable strength can only be found in God. And if you find it in Him, 
then even if you are weak, even if things didn't go the way you wanted to, then you are strong because you find your strength in Him. Friends, the point I'm making is that Paul planted church of the church in what we know as the Mediterranean Rim. And he did probably more for the expansion of the kingdom of God than any other human being in history. Yet, he did not rely on his own willpower to achieve it. He relied on God's power to sustain him, even when it was difficult. And he had a lot of difficulties. And so, if he was here, I think the Apostle Paul's New Year's advice to you would have been something along the lines of, don't try, try to just dig a little deeper in your life. Don't try to find a strength for this year in yourself. Don't think it all depends on you mustering all the strength you can for the difficult times. Instead, surrender your will to God. Find your strength in Him. And who knows what He will achieve through you. The truth is, we all feel weak at times. And we need to learn from the Apostle Paul and find our strength in God. It may be that you are struggling with temptation. It may be that um, you are constantly overwhelmed by a specific sin. that You just struggle with it. You, you can't seem to get over it. It may be that there's an issue out of your past or a challenge in your future or just your present that is overwhelming to you right now. Whatever it may be, know that you don't have to find the strength to deal with that in yourself. The answer is not within. The answer is without. In fact, the answer is actually that without Him, you cannot do anything. That's actually the answer. Jesus said in, in Acts 1 verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. That's the source of strength and power in our lives. Or well, think of one of Jesus' most passionate followers, Peter, the Apostle Peter, close friend of Jesus. And on the night before Jesus was crucified, Peter adamantly announced that even if everybody else would run away, he would not. He would stand, he would fight, he would stay to the very end, even if he was the last one. He would never deny Jesus. And Jesus said to him, well, you know what, uh, before this day is out, basically, uh, you will deny me three times. And Peter disagreed with that. He didn't like that, to hear that because he knew, I mean, he was a very pragmatic fisherman. He was a strong-willed guy, a very strong-willed guy. And, and it was like, you know what, if there's one person who will be able to deal with this, who's got enough willpower to handle this situation, who's got enough to dig deep, it's me. And guess what happened? Exactly what Jesus said. Even in the area where, where Peter was strongest, but Peter was incredibly strong. Willpower wasn't enough. It wasn't a reliable source of strength. Friends, the secret to sustainable strength for 2022 doesn't lie in ourselves. It lies in putting our trust in God and getting our power and our strength from Him. So what does it mean when you get your strength from God? It means that there's no situation you will ever be in where God is not with you. It means that even if the worst happens, He is still with you. Because He promised that He will never leave you, that He will never forsake you. And that nothing will ever separate you from the love He has for you. Nothing. And what you should know about God is that He is the creator of the universe for whom nothing is impossible. And that's why we can trust Him. And therefore the question that truly matters is, how do you access His power? That is the real question. How do you tap into this amazing, sustainable source of strength? And the answer is, you simply ask. You simply ask. You come to Him just as you are, with all your flaws, with all your issues, with all your challenges, with all your struggles, just as you are, you come to Him and you accept what He is offering you. It says in John 1 verse 12, Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. 
Just have to ask. Just have to receive. And so you bring your burdens, you bring your worries, you bring your anxieties to Him, and you trust Him with it, because He cares for you. He loves you, just as you are. Friends, in Jeremiah 17, we get two very powerful images. Contrasting those who try to find their strength in themselves or in other people with those who choose to find their strength in God. Let me just show it to you. The first one is in Jeremiah 17 verse, verse 5 and 6. It says this. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans. That's including you, yourself. Who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like studded shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness, in an uninhabited, salty land. And then verse 7. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank, with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. Never. So here's my question. Which one do you want to be in 2022? A shrub in the desert or a tree planted by the waterside? Friends, if you want to tap into a reliable, sustainable, trustworthy source of strength and power this year, may I encourage you to follow the Apostle Paul's yeah. advice and be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. And as you do, may you discover that regardless of what you may be facing this year, that 2022 will be a year in which you are actually getting stronger. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you are faithful. Thank you that we can put our trust in you and know that your power will never dry up, that your love will never run out. Lord, we give this year to you and we ask that you will please come and just help us to constantly find our strength in you. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen.